how we use the emotion for the base of action sequences. The same way there should be a, an, an emotional push before that big visual effects shot comes. Now, otherwise it would just be a good visual effects. It won't connect to the audiences. Having watched Kalki the second time, I just had to hop in here and discuss every single detail about the film with you, the good, the bad and the ugly. And I think it's important for us to have this discussion because it allows for the discourse to be beyond just patting a creator on the back for trying a genre and also puts in the forefront what could raise the bar for Indian cinema. I'm going to go in chronological order regarding the film's screenplay and do chime in with your thoughts, theories and what we can possibly expect if this universe expands after this installment. The brilliant opening. I think the film opened magnificently. The visuals of the sheer bloodshed that has surrounded Ashwatthama as the Kurukshetra war comes to its conclusion set the tone of the film. This followed by the attack on Uttara's womb with the sole intention of ending the generations of the Pandavas that will follow really made me believe that this journey is going to be so epic. Let's be honest though, from a technological standpoint, we have a long way to go in regards to the de-aging technology and masking a young face on an an agile body, as a young Amitabh Bachchan as Ashwatthama simply looked too animated. This also made many people wonder why the makers just could not cast Abhishek Bachchan for the young portions of Ashwatthama, as it would have worked beautifully for the film. I thought it was such an interesting decision of never revealing Krishna's face as he puts a curse on Ashwatthama for his grave attack. This is a character so revered that it has, on the internet, also become one of the most contentious topic of who would fit the role of Krishna best. But I thought it was quite the wise decision to not reveal the identity of the god, but just for discussion's sake. Who do you think would be ideal for the role of Krishna on the big screen? if we are ever going to be privileged enough to see a rendition of the Mahabharat on the big screen. I think another aspect of the effective opening of the film that is not getting enough credit is the song sung by Amitabh Bachchan that presents the various human tragedies across the centuries that Ashwatthama lives through, hoping and praying that Kalki will arrive and lead the path towards the Satyug but to no avail. This is a song I hope the makers release soon. In my opinion, the only memorable aspect of an otherwise really underwhelming score and album. Lack of emotional resonance. I think the biggest struggle as a viewer has been the abrupt shift of tonality in the first half of the film. With such an impactful opening, one would only foreshadow for this depth to be consistent in the screenplay, and we get hints of the same. We are introduced to the world where there is nothing but misery. Fertile women are set aside in exchange for units offered to the complex. The main villain is described as a hoarder of wealth and necessities. A rebel army and its existence is hinted at. Ronal Thakur is introduced used as a beacon of hope as she is pregnant and undetected. But alas, she does not bear the chosen one. All of these are themes that have great depth and drama. But what's frustrating as a viewer is that this momentum is let go off with the introduction of Commander Manas played by Sasvada Chatterjee, who embarks upon a very sarcastic and laid-back approach with his violent tendencies that just don't seem intimidating enough. He kills a child in the womb mercilessly, finishes Rumi on a whim, and this heartless act of violence should have more impact with you as a viewer. Sadly, the loss of two characters almost happens and we don't emotionally feel drawn towards it. This also I realized upon second viewing is due to the rudimentary staging and the absence of an emotionally riveting background score that almost makes us pass by the event versus really feel for what transpired. The mediocre hero reveal and action. As members of the rebel army are being chased by bounty hunters and are hiding in Kashi, one takes solace in the fact that Bhairava will protect him and in comes our leading man, who is an embodiment of Hancock if you have seen the Will Smith movie, at least in the introduction production, a highly skilled but lazy warrior. While I enjoyed Prabhas having a ball with this role, it's almost in sharp contrast to the gravity of what has transpired just a few minutes ago. The misery, dread and violence is immediately met with light-hearted comedy and banter, and this abrupt tonality is one of the main reasons why audiences felt it was too tough to be invested in the first half of the film. 
What's hilarious about the staging and technical introduction of Bhairava is that the makers try very hard to present Prabhas with several money shots in regular intervals during the first action scene. But it's so odd and basic as randomly Diljeet's song plays as he beats goons in a very poorly choreographed action scene, you started to dread and hope that this is not the quality of the action sequences that will follow as the film progresses. The silver lining of the entire sequence was the use of the cloning technology and the meta jokes of Buji saying she built up his entry so well or Prabhas referencing having a fan base also. Other than that, it's tough to sit through an action sequence that goes on for far too long as insults like Menduk, Juhe and Kide are flung out, looking straight out of what SRK was dishing out in terms of the opening sequence in Brahmastra against those two goons. The worst part of the entire sequence is that the people that surround him are equipped with guns but make it a point to approach him at an arm's distance just to get beat up by him. The eerie world of Yaskin. Speaking of the abrupt shift of tonality, and this is what's frustrating in the first half. Immediately after an action sequence that has the tonality of a comedy of errors, we see elements of the Kurukshetra war resurface after 600 years. This is followed by showcasing the disturbing plan of Yaskin as he houses fertile women and is executing something titled Project K. It is presumed that it would be ideal for Yaskin to have a mother bearing a child for a 150 day schedule so that he can inseminate a portion and make use of the serum that comes out of it for his vested interests. For this advanced form of technology, the human DNA can't cope and one is thrown into a pit of fire as they are of no use anymore. As one of the scientists attempts to kill Yaskin, you get a glimpse of his philosophy and do chime in with your own thoughts regarding his end goal. What seems to be pretty clear is that Yaskin is absolutely fed up of the cyclical and destructive nature of humans, who seem to perish everything around them, not having a morsel of appreciation of the world and its resources. And in order to ensure a brighter tomorrow, the only solution is to collect every resource in his own utopia and curtail the arrival of Kalki. This can only be done if he grabs hold of all the fertile women of the world, hoping to chance upon the woman who bears Kalki, using his powers to be as strong as him in order to curtail the commencement of the Satyug, ensuring that the only yug that will follow after this is Yaskin's yug. You have to remember that this is a world introduced to us where gods cannot be worshipped, and the biggest threat to Yaskin will be anyone becoming a messiah or a beacon of hope. Philosophy much like Thanos. The other theory that may also be true is that Yaskin is building another human race through the serum in order to ensure that all are subservient to his ultimate goal, not having free will and choice inbuilt into their DNA so that he can rule for centuries. This character and his ultimate goal is still unclear and I would love to know what you think about the same cameos for the sake of it. With the eerie nature of Yaskin being shown to us and the predicament Deepika Padukone finds herself in as she bears a child more than the stipulated time, the comedy carries on in Kashi as Bhairava is interacting with Ram Gopal Verma, a street vendor and marvels at an anda, taking away again from the gravity of the situation. This however is followed by a cameo by Dulkar Salman, which I believe should have been far more impactful than what was shown. A captain that raises Bhairava, the reveal of the man should have been as epic as we presume Parshuram to be in the ancient texts. But we got a very unassuming Dulkar Salman teaching him the ways almost like any other mentor-student relationship. I believe this and Brunal Thakur's cameos could have been staged and presented way better, where their integration would have carried more weight than just being another star face being in the ensemble cast. Even from a dramatic standpoint, the backstabbing is presented in such a casual fashion, you can't feel Bhairava's sad self-reflection. It just seems like any other story being told. This could have been an insight into why Bhairava has such a tough exterior, why he uses comedy as a defense mechanism, but we get none of it. Bhairava and Roxy go clubbing. This interesting flashback is followed by the unnecessary plot point of the movie as Roxy, played by Disha Patni, is introduced and Bhairava is described as only caring about the complex versus Roxy obviously having feelings for him, while of course they play fight and do salsa with one another. Upon landing a part-time job in the complex, Bhairava tags along with Roxy and gallivants across the complex. In moments, especially on the beach, it seemed Disha was straight out of the sets of Malang. The random music, the gate-crashing party and being eventually 
eventually chucked out of the complex provided nothing for the story as it was just a reflection of Bhairava's obsession with the complex, something we already knew about his character. Another snippet from the first half that could have easily chopped down the three hours and more running time of this film. The Impressive Interval Block The escape of Deepika Padukone from the complex is juxtaposed brilliantly with Amitabh Bachchan as Ashwatthama finally realizing his calling has come. After 600 years of misery around him, the new tomorrow is finally going to give birth. And as Deepika's Khaleesi-style walk through the fire to announce a new tomorrow happens, one hoped and wished that this was the pathway for the film also to take itself seriously and properly do a deep dive on themes of this story that has so much potential. We have seen the fluff, we have patiently sat through most of it and now let's get back to real business as the rebels of Shambhala rescue Sumati. Hilarious cameo and the real fun starts. As the rebels are heading towards Shambhala and Sumati gets a clearer picture of where she is headed, the handsome bounty is out to catch hold of the mother that is fleeing. This is followed by one of my favourite cameos of the movie as SS Rajamoli plays another rival bounty hunter and the best meta punchline as Prabhas dreads staying with him because he will not leave him for 5 years was the icing on the cake. As Amitabh Bachchan has acquainted himself with Sumati and his purpose is as clear as day, I think we finally got an action sequence we got fully engaged in. This was not only stylized but had hints of playful humour that finally felt organic. The punch and the realisation of Bhairava of the sheer strength of Ashwatthama was absolutely hilarious. The sheer presence and strength is something Bhairava gets overwhelmed with and ensuring to the complex that he will get Sumati and the child. We wait for what will transpire in Shambhala, things finally get serious. The Kurukshetra War Every time the film references the Mahabharat, I could not help myself but get giddy with joy because it is these sequences when you see them come alive on the big screen that the movie really elevates tenfold. I think this is what audiences also realized as they watched the film, that the integration of mythology is something the film did exceedingly well. And this was not really the case with regards to the sci-fi elements and the dystopian world we were introduced to. I don't know why, but Vijay Devrakonda is getting really trolled for his cameo as Arjun. I probably believe that this is because of the intensity and anger with which he delivered his dialogues, something not reflective of Arjun's personality and character. I think the biggest contentious topic that has come out of all of this is who is a stronger warrior, Karn or Arjun. What Vijay possesses in terms of physical presence probably went missing in the delivery of his dialogue. I think the path that the makers have taken is to present the tragic hero of Kand as the superior warrior. And this has of course led to many debates which I would urge you to chime in in the comments below. The Bridge Battle this has to go down as one of the most exhilarating portions of the film as Bhairava just gets buji after an episode of Pimp My Ride and we get his shape-shifting quality put to use as two Ashwathamas battle with one another. The battle carries on and just the sheer might of Amitabh Bachchan is something to marvel at. I say this again and again, but what the legend was capable of pulling off in this film is truly mesmerizing. The complex identifies the location of Shambhala and a battle ensues with the rebels. The sequence is well when the film really reached its peak. I wish the film, rather than deviating its attention to the commercial fluff and comedic sequences, actually stayed consistent with such themes. I feel like many makers believe that this world gets boring for viewers, but I beg to differ, as these elements were the most interesting elements of the film. As it becomes clear mid-battle that Prabhas is the incarnation of Karn, I can't tell you how my theatre simply erupted, making the final blow against Manas even more sweet. This intensity of Bhairava, this realisation and momentary getting lost about his purpose as a bounty hunter was truly commercial cinema peaking. As Yaskin gets totally jacked with a small portion of the serum which had Kalki's DNA, as Bhairava is still figuring out his purpose and where he lost himself momentarily, I wonder where the film is headed if its future instalments do materialise. Will it consistently draw parallels and inspirations from the Mahabharat as Yaskin and Bhairava will battle it out? Because I think Karn is probably one of the most interesting characters to be a protagonist as we move the story forward. I guess we will have to wait and see. And that was the video guys. 
write down in the comments below with your own thoughts regarding the film your theories and let's have a proper spoiler filled discussion in the comments below please don't forget to follow me on instagram the handle is right in front of you follow me at jammy pants4 also please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead thank you for watching